It's a very sad day for America. This should never happen. If you challenge an election, you should be able to challenge an election. I thought the election was a rigged election, a stolen election, and I should have every right to do that. As you know, you have many people that you've been watching over the years do the same thing, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Stacey Abrams or many others. When you uh, have that great freedom to challenge, you have to be able to, otherwise you're going to have very dishonest elections. What has taken place here is a travesty of... Do you think we're moving towards civil war? It's good to have you at Bedminster. It's very nice. I love it. You're saying they stole it from you last time. Why wouldn't they do the same this time? Oh, well, they'll try. They're going to be trying. Mitch McConnell... Listen, I'm going to say some stuff. It's going to make some people mad. It's not going to be popular. Number one, what does President Trump get out of this knowing these people legit hate you they're coming for you they're trying to get you all right impeach impeach slander making up stories about the the russia stuff that ended up not being true uh you know they, they want to arrest them arrest them again arrest them again they're doing all of this kind of stuff right and it's like okay like why would you just continue to put why, why don't you just go hide somewhere you know what i'm saying like what is making you say you know what I know that this is how they're going to do me, but I'm going to go ahead anyway, you know what, and, and do what I do. Now, if he was in the good old boys club, because people love, they love to say this when I talk about politics, right? They say, well, they're both, you know, uh, two different uh, feathers of the same bird. Look, if Trump was really a part of that good boys club, they would give him a pass just like they did with Hunter Biden, just like they did with Hillary Clinton. Now, we know for a fact we have receipts that. These individuals broke the law. You guys have seen some of this crazy stuff that is on, you know, Biden's uh, laptop. It's crazy that you they could find life on Mars, but they can't find who brought cocaine into the White House with all those cameras and knowing like it's a fact like this cat was smoking crack and he got like he got a serious problem, but they couldn't find it. And they just they just drop it. That's being part of the good boys club. If Trump was a part of that club, they would give him a pass too. The problem is he's not a part of that club. As much as y'all don't like him, you don't like how he talks, y'all don't like his tweets, you don't like that he's not politically correct, he is not part of that club, all right? Uh, and not to the extent, you know, these other ones are because the reality is they would sweep all this stuff under the rug. Why are they so threatened by him? Let me tell you what I personally believe, and I've been saying this since, you know, Obama was president, some just don't sit right in my spirit. Uh, I met President Obama long before, uh, you know, he was president when I was living in Chicago. He was like a senator. I shook his hand. Uh, he was like in front of a grocery store campaigning and some was just just off. Right. And so somehow conveniently, the first black president that gets elected, they have him push the LGBTQ agenda. Well, you say anything against him, we'll just say that you're racist. Right. Um, you say anything against the LGBTQ community. Right. We'll we'll say that you're homophobic. Then Hillary Clinton was in the batter's box. If you had paid any attention to the debates, she was getting ready to push that feminist agenda. So we're going to push the LGBTQ agenda on you with the African-American president. Right. This is a little chess move. Then we got the Hillary Clinton, who's the surefire runner up winner. She's got all the qualifications like she's going to be the next president. Like It was almost like guaranteed. Right. We're going to have her push the feminist agenda and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, with the Supreme Court justices because they knew that, you know, that time was coming up for that change. And Hillary Clinton was literally saying what she was going to do in the debates. Trump says he's going to run. People laugh. They mock. Nobody takes him serious. He wins. Let me tell you what would have probably happened. First black president pushed the LG LGBTQ agenda. Hillary Clinton come in, pushed the feminist agenda. Then where's that little white dude's name, the uh, LGBTQ guy? They probably would have gave us a uh, uh, LGBTQ president after that. Like, that's the agenda. That's the direction. Because, I mean, you got to be, I don't want to say an idiot, but you got to be blind to not see that these people are trying to push an agenda. Think about it. When Obama was in, big push. Trump got in. He started, uh, you know, changing a lot of the stuff that they did, changing a lot of the legislation. Like, he was pushing back against a lot of stuff they were doing. Then Biden got back in. And what is the first thing he do? He started pushing it again. Go look. Go check. Now, I always say a lot of people get caught up in feelings emotions how they feel about a person i want to know what kind of legislation these people are passing that is uh, going to affect my children that's going to affect the church that's going to affect you know my family that's going to affect the schools you know i could care less y'all say okay he's making these mean tweets to me i'm looking at why are y'all so obsessed with trying to get this man 
Like when we clearly, everybody knows, and the Bible talks about a strong delusion in the end times. Everybody knows, most people have seen, if they want to see the truth, what Clinton did, right? Uh, what is on Hunter Biden's laptop, what they're talking about, this stuff with Biden, uh, all these stories and slander that they came against, you know, with Trump, which was pretty much lies, like the Russia collusion, and it came out to be not true. Now, remember, after this previous uh, last election, I was walking in the woods. You guys remember the video? I seen the tree that was the tree that was overturned, and the Lord told me that He was going to um, expose the root of just everything, like the corruption, the evil. Like there's some evil stuff that's going on in America. There's some wicked stuff that's going on in America, and there's a strong delusion out there, right? And it's happened. But here's the part: it's like nobody cares. Like this stuff has continued to get exposed. You know, all the conspiracy theories that people were getting censored for, getting canceled for, ended up being true. Still, we can't even really say what we want to say because they'll shut you down. And what have I been saying all this time? What you see happening to President Trump is eventually, sooner than later, going to happen to Christians, right? If they can't bully you into silence, then they're going to try, you know, they're going to try to bully you. They're going to try to cancel culture you. They're going to try to censor you. They're going to try to, you know, slander you, whatever they can do, try to discredit uh, your voice. All right. Anybody who's been on social media for a while, like me, for the last couple of years, you see what happens. Right. I got a Facebook page with over, over a million followers, probably 100 people see my posts on there because they've censored it and censored it. So much. like, why are you so scared of my voice? You let these people post all this crazy stuff on Facebook, Twitter, all these different places, and they only censor certain voices. And they've had, you know, so many court cases uh, about this. They've had Zuckerberg come up there to Congress, right? So there's only like a certain voice that they're afraid of that they're trying to silence. And I just think it's interesting that the ones that are doing the silencing are the ones pushing the LGBTQ agenda, the ones that are you know, um, pushing all these these mandates and all this other different crazy stuff that was going on, which is really just a setup for the Antichrist system, right? If you don't have the mark, right, you can't buy, you can't sell. It's prepping you. It's conditioning you for what's to come. That's why you got to stay prayed up. I mean, to me, it's just so much deeper than what people think it is. And a lot of people are just mad based off what the media told them to be. A lot of people don't do their own research. I just don't see how... You do your own research and you just don't see it. Like it's clear as day, you know what I'm saying? What is happening? And it's going to happen to Christians, right? That stuff that they're pushing, those agendas that they're pushing, you see there's already coming a place where, and I've been saying this for years, the collision is going to show who's who. A lot of people are bowing down to the pressure. A lot of people in, in church are becoming politically correct. They will not speak out against anything that's going to cause controversy, cause them to be in trouble. But that's crazy because the truth is always going to cause controversy when we live in a world where the lies are being pushed and the spirit of the Antichrist wants people to be believe lies. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded them, right? So there is a deception out there. There is a strong delusion. So when you speak truth and the Bible says broad is the way that leads to destruction, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. So a lot of people ain't really going to be speaking the truth and the truth is probably going to go against the popular opinion, right? Well, then you're going to get hate. You're going to get controversy. You're going to have people who love the truth, people who hate it, people who receive the truth, people who reject it, all right? So I just think like, yo, let me say this because I know it's going to come up, right? Well, you're the guy who said that Trump was going to win. Hey, listen, when I was in Korea, the first time he was getting ready to run, I said, hey, I was praying and stuff. And I said, I feel like, I feel like God told me Trump was going to win. And people laughed and they mocked and they made fun of me. And I explained it. I said, man, I was praying. I read Isaiah 45, King Cyrus, 45th president. King Cyrus told them to go to build a temple. The word that God gave me was, if you build it in the season, I'm going to bless it. And I knew the season meant like, okay, you know, when this individual becomes president based off what God was showing me, guess what? All these people who mocked and laughed when Trump won, nobody made an apology video. Nobody said, hey, bro, we, none of us thought he was going to win. We thought you were crazy. We were making fun of you. And when he won, you know, we were, we just want to apologize. You said God told you that he won. It happened. Guess what? None of them made an apology. And that's when I realized, yo, a lot of Christians are just fake. Even if you get it right and they don't want to hear it, they're just not going to hear it. But guess what happened? 
you know, the second election came around and I was building, right? I got out the army. I'm building everything that I'm building. God is blessing all the men of God that I see, you know, in Florida, Texas, all these different places, California, they're building. God is blessing. He's giving them land. People are building their own schools, getting their own, you know, farms and every like it's literally happening just like God told me, because what he was showing me was he's preparing the kingdom for all the other stuff that's coming. Right. And and it preparing us to be, you know, have our own uh, infrastructure, whether it's just simple things like kingdom entertainment or more complex things like kingdom farming kingdom grocery stores, because they're going to put all these regulations and, and restrictions. I'm not going to get too deep in that, but guess what? Shortly after God gave me that word, right? What happened? We had the big pandemic and then all of this stuff started happening, right? And just like that, Hey, you can't go in the store unless you have this, this, and this, and people, you know, paying for stuff with their palms now and everything. It's so clear that the Bible is true. It's so clear, Hey, where we're going. And people don't want to see it. It's it's like the things of the spirit are always going to sound like foolishness to carnal people. Most of the American population, right, and the media is like, oh, hate Trump, don't like Trump. I'm telling you guys what I know. Anytime I see Hollywood, the demonic music industry, all of these people saying, hey, this is the way that we should go. And I know that they don't have the spirit of God. So they're probably under the spirit of the Antichrist. My thing is, what made you guys come together? What made you come under that mindset? The devil is the prince of the air, airplay, airways. What made you guys come into agreement and say, this is who we should hate. This is who we should love. This is who we should support. This is who we should come against. And so when I see those people group up, remember the wheat and tares, I say, eh, something's, something's off about that because the Bible says broad is the way that leads to destruction. So if all of these Hollywood people and these demonic music industry people and this LGBTQ community are all coming together saying the same things, something isn't right. It's not adding up. Now, I'm not saying that Trump is some kind of hero or whatever, right? I told you guys what I thought. You could say that he's pandering or whatever, but the reality is when he was in office, that legislation was not getting pushed to the same way it was with Biden and with uh, Obama. And quite frankly, it was better when trump was president you know what i'm saying people are not gonna like that but it's true biden is horrible so i just think from a kingdom perspective you take all the feelings and the emotions out of it and you just look strictly at legislation laws that affect me affect my family affect my children i don't see how you're gonna vote biden i don't see how you're gonna vote for these democrats pushing these agendas you know what i'm saying so i don't know you could pray about it you don't gotta agree you can get mad about my opinion hey that's cool that's what happens but um, I just feel like, hey, we, we're going to see what's going to happen. A lot of people gave me a real, you know, hard time and a lot of backlash and twisted, you know, a lot of the things that I said. Yes, I said, look, I feel like the second time around, thank you, Lord, for bringing it to my memory. I feel like he's going to, you know, win again. I said that because I wasn't done building. I'm still building right now. But I believe that God just allowed you know, Biden to get in there and people see how horrible it is. And now hopefully people have waken up and we'll see what happens from here. I got a feeling, you know, how it's going to go, but we'll just see. You know what I'm saying? The bottom line is we need to be right with God. We're living in the end times. Like it's crazy out here, folks. You know, you really want to be prayed up. You don't want to be under that uh, delusion because let me tell you, it's only going to get worse. We've only got a little taste of what's to come and God is trying to give us time to prepare and get right. You know, a lot of people don't want to hear it. And it's, it's not going to be with the people that are your preference sometimes. That's why you got to see in the spirit. If you're thinking from just skin color, race, what you were taught, how you were told to think, hey, you might mess around being some big trouble. You got to think of it from the perspective of, um, you know, the spirit. Ask God to show you what's going on in the spirit. I pray about all of this stuff. And I'm telling you, some is just off. It ain't right. It don't seem it don't seem legit. So go to www.marcusrogersministries.org. I need some of you guys to really partner with me, guys, like uh, for this final push at the church. I'm hoping to have the grand opening like soon. And, um, you know, just finances. We did the um, the fire inspection and all of that stuff. And you guys seen the updates that I posted. But, um, hey, just pray about it. 
If not, uh, go stream the music, A Case of Grace. People have been loving that album. And so I appreciate the support. Love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus' name.